What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell and in today's video we're covering the Bond Cloud opening. Now if you haven't heard of it before, I'm sorry to introduce you to such a terrible opening option, but it starts out with white playing e4 and now against e5 marching our king towards the center of the board with king e2. Now hopefully if you've been playing chess for more than 24 hours you can see that this move of king e2 is absolutely terrible and it's absolutely bad for three reasons. First off it limits the activity of our back rank pieces, specifically our queen on d1 and our lie squared bishop on f1. Now, yes, by playing this move of e4, we are attacking key light squares such as d5 and f5 right in the center of the action. Beyond the opening, we're not just moving pawns to simply throw pawns at the opponent's king, but really try to get those back rank pieces involved. And this move of king e2 simply gets in the way. The second reason that this move is bad is for the rest of the game, even if we go back to e1, we're not going to be able to castle going forward our king has officially moved so we cannot castle to the king side or to the queen side which is going to make this king a very predictable and big big target for the rest of this game and the third reason that this move of king e2 is bad is because we just played the move king e2 right so the big question is okay you reach this position for some reason following e4 and king e2 you're looking at troll openings you're messing around with friends maybe you're trying to follow in the footsteps of someone like nakamura whatever your reason is you reach this position and now you're not trying to lose in the next five moves. What do we do here? Well, the most popular moves here from black include knight c6, eyeing knight d4 check ideas against our king, as well as this idea of knight f6, simply attacking the undefended pawn. Let's take a look at both of these, starting off with knight c6, eyeing this knight d4 check idea. Well, in this case, I'm gonna be recommending this move of c3, the Nakamura special, really trying to limit the activity of this knight on c6 and starting out with this move right here we see a common theme in the bond cloud opening and that is white simply trying to limit the activity of the opponent's pieces now we're always trying to do this no matter what opening you're playing you don't want your opponent's pieces to be active while you want your pieces to be active that's pretty basic but with the bond cloud this theme is exponentially important because guys if we start breaking through with moves such as f4 or d4 trying to play aggressive chess we have a king on e2 i mean this is just a death sentence we have to play moves like c3 and try to not allow black to even enter our side of the board here. So by playing c3, this knight really can't go anywhere important as of now. And here, if a move like knight f6, we got to play this move of d3. Guys, this light squared pawn chain on d3 and e4 is extremely important. And here, if we face a move such as d5, we got to hold this fort together. We cannot take this pawn on d5 because then black's going to be able to play queen takes or knight takes, and they're going to have a wide open center with a king on e2 that cannot castle for the rest of the game. So we have to hold on to this pawn on e4 for as long as we can. Here we can play a move such as queen c2. Whole idea being, look, I mean, if black wants to take on e4, we'll simply capture back. And here if a move like bishop c5, I personally like this idea of h3. Now look, if black does get this move in of knight g4, it's not necessarily the end of the world because we have knight h3 ready to go. But why let this knight into g4 in a position like this in the first place, right? Let's play h3. And again, we're trying to limit the functionality and activity of both of these knights. This move of c3 is very important, stopping d4 and b4 ideas from this knight on c6. And this knight on f6 cannot take on e4, unless, of course, they just want to lose a knight. And now knight g4 ideas are not available. If black tries to get their light squared bishop involved with something like bishop e6, okay, we'll drop our king back. Now, after something like queen d7, we'll continue with knight f3, play something like bishop e2. And notice again, after bishop b6, we cannot castle kingside. We'd love to do this, but the game started off with us playing king e2, on the second move for some reason. So we can't castle king side, but what we can do here is play an idea such as knight g5. We're being attacked and black is ahead in development. Because of that, we want to trade down. When you're attacking, you don't want to trade down. You want to keep your firepower. But in a position like this, where we're simply trying to hang on, we want to trade down. We want to look at knight takes e6 ideas and really getting the bishop pair out of that. And if you plug this into a computer program, it's going to give you about a minus one advantage for black. Again, I'm not sitting here and saying that the bond cloud is a good chess opening for white. But what I am saying is that you can play it and not get a losing game if you use it correctly. We have reached move 11 with the bond cloud and are only down minus one in the evaluation. And I think that in itself is an achievement. So y'all, following this key idea of c3, whenever we see this move of knight c6, here if black does continue with knight f6, we're simply going to continue with a d3 followed by queen c2, as we just covered. What happens if black just breaks through right away 
with a move like d5. Again, do not capture on d5. We are on the defensive. We don't want this game to open up. Instead, we're going to continue again with d3. And look, if black wants to play something like knight f6, we'll play queen c2 and we'll transpose into the line just covered. And here, if black takes on e4, they can take our queen off the board. And notice, yes, our king cannot castle, but it couldn't castle starting at move two. So this is actually a big plus for white if black decides to trade off queens. In fact, right now, white is already finding practical chances into this game. I mean, here if something like knight f6, again, limit, 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 limit the activity of both of these knights. This knight on f6, let's play something like f3, right? Preventing knight takes e4 and knight g4 ideas. And here if something like bishop e6, we can now just continue with something like bishop e3. And if castling queenside would check, we have a surprisingly nice square for our king on c2. At first sight, some may wonder, okay, I mean, this king isn't castled. It doesn't seem to have a lot of minor pieces around it. But again, this pawn on c3, a key, key piece in this position, really preventing this knight on c6 from going anywhere. And this bishop on f8 currently can't find a super active spot because we're denying all of those key dark squares. And finally, this bishop on e6 is an active piece, but doesn't pose much of a threat to our king on c2. So here, if we see something like knight d7 from black, which by the way, is the most popular option online, we can now just continue with knight d2. Start developing our pieces. If black wants to play something like bishop c5, okay, I mean, let's just take it off the board. And now even start expanding on the queen side with something like b4, right? Trying to kick this knight around. Black can try to play something like knight a4, trying to create some kind of attacking chances. But here is white. We have a solid position. Let's just play this move of bishop b5, attacking the knight on c6, and more importantly, this knight on a4. And if black doesn't want to just lose a piece, they got to bring this knight back to b6, in which case I personally like capturing on c6 because now black has isolated and double isolated pawns in front of the king entering into the endgame. We could play a move here such as knight e2, but I personally like this idea of knight h3, eyeing knight g5 ideas, which would attack both the bishop on e6 and the pawn on f7. And on top of that, eyeing this square of f2 for the knight. This knight is not the most active knight I've seen in my entire career of playing chess. In fact, it's not even close. But again, guys, in the bond cloud, we're not trying to win the game right away. We're simply trying to hang on, use a good defensive presence, and hang on to key squares. By having our knight on f2, we're defending this square of d3 and really making it hard for black to find any kind of solid breakthrough there. And look, I mean, if black wants to take our knight on h3, we do capture back. And I do have to admit, this gives us double ice isolated pawns but at the same time black has the same exact thing not to mention this isolated pawn on a7 now as white we have ideas such as a4 and a5 expanding on the queen side of the board we could also put our rooks on d1 as well as the semi-open file of g1 and here guys we as white have a fighting chance coming out of the bond club so y'all going back to this position in which case we entered into the bond cloud opening theory with king e2 if we do see a move here like knight c6 simply continue with c3 protecting that square of d4 we have d3 on the way protecting the pawn on e4 and at that point again play a move like h3 stopping g4 play a move like knight f3 play queen c2 hold a solid position hold everything together and they're going to be okay what about a move here though like knight f6 immediately attacking the pawn on e4 well in this case we're going to continue again with d3 Three. As always, if we see a move like knight c6, we got c3 on the way. But what happens here if black breaks through immediately with d5? I mean, here, knight f6 and d5, black is making it very clear they're trying to put as much pressure on this pawn as they possibly can. And now I'm going to be recommending this idea of knight d2. We obviously don't have enough time to play something like c3 followed by queen c2, but we can bring our knight here and simply defend that pawn. And now if black continues with something like bishop c5, I've seen Nakamura play both h3, preventing knight g4 ideas, attacking the pawn on f2, as well as this move of c3. He actually played c3 against Grandmaster Daniel Naroditsky and went on to win a blitz game, a 3 plus 0 blitz game with white against one of the top Grandmaster players in the world. Here Naroditsky went with the move of a5, which we'll cover in just a moment. Well, what happens here? if black plays knight g4. Well, again, we have this knight h3 idea. It's really not the end of the world. It depends if you're comfortable with this knight on h3 or if you want to play h3 first and really try to prevent this knight from coming to g4 in the first place. And look, if black plays something like castling kingside here, okay, we'll drop our king back to the first rank, play bishop e2, forming a battery ram against that knight on g4. And if this knight goes back 
to a square like f6. We're going to continue to play bong cloud chess. Hang on in this position. And you know the drill. Do not take on d5, but keep fortifying the wall, specifically this pawn on e4. Hang in there and hope for the end game. So y'all, in a position like this where black is wasting no time putting pressure on e4, followed by bishop c5 putting pressure on the f2 pawn, we can either play this move of h3 as well as c3, which is completely playable. I mean, here Naroditsky actually didn't play the move of knight g4, but just started to expand on the queen side with a5. A common idea as seen earlier is b4 in the bond cloud trying to create some kind of activity on the queen side of the board. So here black's going, look, I don't want you to even think about playing b4 for the rest of the game. But now we see Nakamura just continue with queen c2, really trying to hold this position together, defending that pawn on e4 as much as he possibly can. And here following knight c6, we see Nakamura continue with knight g f3 followed by h3. A key idea, again, in the bond cloud, we're trying to limit the activity of those opponent's pieces as much as we possibly can so that they can't even think about attacking checkmating ideas against our king on e2. Here we see the move of b6 and following g3, bishop a6. This is actually a very creative option. Here black is actually threatening to take on e4 and notice how we can't capture back because this pawn is pinned to the king on e2. So here we see Nakamura go, whoa, I'm getting the heck out of the way. I'm playing king e1. And now against the move of queen d7, continuing with very solid chess of b3 followed by a3. Playing a fortress type position here with setups all the way from a3 to d3, as well as g3 to h3 in terms of the pawn structure, holding onto this pawn on e4. And now in this position, again, this is a blitz game against a top grandmaster level player. Naroditsky tried to create some kind of attacking chances here, but in the end, he basically just started trading down pieces. Nakamura held on and went on to win this game. So y'all going back to this position following king e2, we just covered two different moves. First off, knight c6, in which case we're ready to play c3. And also this idea of knight f6 followed by d5. If you do see this immediate pressure on this e4 pawn, simply continue with d3, knight d2, and then continue with your regular bond cloud ideas. But I wanted to finish out this video by covering very quickly what happens if black doesn't try to break the position open and here play something quiet like d6. Well, in this case, this actually just makes our job a whole lot easier. Here, we're just going to continue with something like d3, as always. And now, something like knight f6, we're not going to play crazy chess. We're not playing something like f4 because our king is literally on e2. We're just going to continue here with the move like g3, right? Looking to fianchetto our light squared bishop, a move like h3, c3, queen c2. You know the drill. We're playing the bond cloud. And here, white with a surprisingly okay chance to make a game out of this. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to learn how to play the Lemming Defense, a very bad opening for Black, but in one sense, almost kind of works. Click that video to the left. If you'd like to see our entire openings playlist, click that playlist to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.